starting out on fly fishing today to me looks daunting there's so much information and the emphasis seems to be more about how many fish you catch how big that fish is and how far you can cast but without a doubt this is a great pastime and we are out there sometimes in the most amazing locations sharing it with all the wonderful creatures and sometimes a few friends so can we simplify this wonderful pastime Okay, keeping something simple for me is the go-to. A lot of the boys will tell you it's because I'm lazy. But I've been fishing the simpler methods for years. So for the purpose of this video, what I'm doing, I'm fishing on the floating line. You'll probably notice I've often got my five foot intermediate braid on. This has a purpose, but for this I've taken it off and I'm going straight on to my tippet or leader slash tip it so why i say leader slash tip it is mainly because i'm making up my own tapered leader i'll start off with about five foot of 15 pound either mono or fluoro carb and that's with a perfection loop so i can loop to loop to your loop on the fly line and then i'll use a surgeon's knot to finish off the tippet material now if you're looking at a 10 foot tippet overall obviously it's going to be five foot but if you can increase that the advantages are definitely there which i'll explain later and for this tippet material let's just say i'm going with a seven pound fluorocarb so while we're on the subject of fly line and tippet material i want to point out one really important fact and it's about a lot of people out on the water and i've seen a lot of it myself and i do hear of it from the fly line companies when they get lines coming back to them and it's that a lot of you are putting your tippet material directly onto the loop of the fly line now under pressure that is cutting into your outer core once you've cut into the outer core it allows water into the inner core this then causes a capillary action and slowly your line is going to get overweighted this is when you take it off and send it back to the shop telling them that you have now got a sink tip putting on the heavier mono or a braid or something that of a much wider diameter onto that loop is going to fix this problem but it also helps with the energy transfer from heavy to thin what's going on in the water okay with the conditions changing aquatic life is starting to make a move and the fish they're switching on to it so the fish will be moving higher in the columns and they're certainly moving closer to the margins so it's important that we cover the margins and the difference of fish in the margins as opposed to out in the middle of the lake is when there's prey in the lake they can swim as fast as they like they ain't gonna get away from that oh. fish but in the margins they'll make one quick dash and they're gone and the fish know it so when you're fishing the margins more often than not the take mm. can be quite aggressive yeah, this arm. 
Okay, so what about fly choice? Now this is going to be very confusing if you're starting out. There are so many patterns out there. But what we're really looking for for this method is something smaller, sparse and lightweight. So a few good patterns I will mention and that's things like the Dielbach, Pheasant Tail Nymph and the Hare's Ear. But what I'm going to be working with is this pattern which is tied on a size 14 and down on a light wire hook. And all I've got on here is a mix of Hare's Ear and Grey Squirrel Dubbin and a very fine light wire. And what I'll often do when I'm on the water is I'll put a bit of gink on the back just to hold it up a little bit. The idea is to keep it on or as good as near the top. I do allow it to go into the water at times but it will drop through the columns really slowly. So the idea here is to cover as much water as I can and with shorter casts. So once you approach the bank making sure you're covering the margins and then start fan casting. So it's very much like fishing the dry fly. I'm going to be on the move. But the other good thing about it is I'm fishing with a single fly. So a little bit about the tippet and the line. Now everybody should understand line flash and it doesn't matter what line you're presenting. And what this does, it uneases the fish. They don't shoot off to the other side of the lake in a panic. But they're certainly aware that there is something unusual going on and it makes them a bit uneasy and probably a little bit more finicky in a take. So what does line flash look like? So what you're going to see is normal speed, then I'll slow it up by 50 and even more. But you can certainly see why it spooks the fish. But it's not all bad news. From studying fish over the years, what I have discovered is that they recover quite quickly from a line flash. But not all fish are going to be affected with line flash. Fish that are moving nearer the surface will have a reduced window. And then you have to consider conditions on the day. Okay, so the fish's window is what it can see at the surface. And this will depend on the fish's depth. The deeper the fish goes, the more of the surface it will see. The higher it goes, the less it will see. So if the fish were to remain at this level, we could present our fly on a much shorter tippet, as our fly line is going to be well outside the fish window. So to fish with the shorter tippet is definitely selective. But we want to increase our chances, so we lengthen the tippet. So we can now cover fish in a bigger area and at various depths. So a bit more about the method and how we're going to fish it. Now this method is what Justin Allen uses a lot. So for anybody following the channel, you'll know how successful the method is. But Justin, he's always on a 20 foot plus tippet. And he always fishes the hang. And that's at about two rod lengths out. And this makes a lot of sense, as the fish would be less spooked out at that distance. For most of the time all I'm going to be doing is retrieving the length of the tippet. And that will be done with a steady figure of 8 or maybe a little twitch. But once I've reached that point I will then start fishing the hang. But you will often find that the fish will take almost as soon as that fly hits the water or it won't be long after. Yep. Yeah. I tell you what, they don't have fight that something, don't they? Yeah. Okay, that was a good start. But you don't always get a good start like that. Okay, keep moving. And continually fan casting and just work your way around. You'd be surprised how many fish you'll pick up and obviously if you hit amongst some stock fish in a shoal then obviously you know you're going to be picking up a lot more of these fish. Um, I'm checking the closer areas first. Margins. Margins are always a good bet. There's a lot of fish. Hug the margins. Certainly at this time of the year, because obviously, you know, they're, they're starting to pick up on food now. Food is starting, aquatic life is starting to come alive a bit. And the fish is catching on to this. And so it's always worth just to hang your fly in these areas for a while. All I'm doing with this, this pattern, 
uh, I cast it out, I let it drop a little bit, I retrieve, give it a bit of movement because sometimes as it's dropping, that first bit of movement as you're pulling that up towards the surface is enough to get the reaction from the fish. Again in the margins, because what I'm doing now, I'm making sure I'm covering that margin before I move into that space. You say, just keep moving. But you'll soon find that these fish, they'll come up for that pattern quite quickly at times. Now we've got this bit of a ripple, you know, that's going to help us a good bit. It's going to just disguise us and the line and the tippets a little bit. And fish moving there now, a bit of line up ready. I'll get there out there now in a minute. Moving out there again. And there. Could be a few fish in here. shorter now I know a lot of you would be casting straight out to that fish and you haven't even covered this water okay not concentrating very well there busy talking and, and then missed the fish uh, the take was so gentle you could just barely see the line moving but then I continued fishing around on the bank and I'm still covering the same water myself gareth wilson uk fly fisher has mentioned it many times before and i've noticed it and it's presenting the fly at a different angle uh so this could be the case but as soon as i got around to this next bend the fish was on i took that virtually straight off the top again as soon as it landed it, it almost hit that straight away. Mm. What I'm going to do, I'm going to head up this way because there's a good bit of weed in front of me there. I'm going to see if I can get this fish to come up. There's a bit more clearance up by here when I release it. Not a massive fish, I tell you what, fight like buggery, you know. Oh, I hope that wasn't my flight gone. No, that was cool. Okay, so what am I going to do? Looking here just now, at the moment it's gone. There's nothing much moving here at the minute. Um, but just a moment ago, there was obviously a few fish moving here. So I'm just going to concentrate here for probably a little bit longer than I normally would. Uh, and just let the pattern drop a little deeper. So it's just worth that little bit more effort because of what we've just seen just a moment ago. And there's another good fish coming out there. That was one hell of a jump. Nothing there. Okay, check. I'm just backtracking a little bit there. Sometimes in your head you get this hunch that it's just worth maybe going over again or you get a feeling there could be something there. Uh, 
any hunches that you get while you're fishing are to follow them through. Okay, a few points that are often brought up when somebody is starting out on fly fishing. The first one being, where do we start to fly fish? When we're approaching the water. Well, for most of the waters, the fish are going to be everywhere. In the summer months, you'll often find that the windward bank could be a good option, as we have a lot of insect life being washed in towards that bank. But for a lot of the time, there are no telltale signs. So a sure way to find out is why not ask the fishery manager. The fishery manager could tell you where the water has been stocked. And these stock fish can hold in one area for several days. But the whole part about the fishing is using your skills and your knowledge to locate these fish. And adopting a method as to what we're doing now can certainly help do that. So the next one would be, what fly do we start with? Now for us boys, that is a lot easier because we fish more for the resident fish and the resident fish is more tuned in to what they're feeding on. So we will, if you like, match in the hatch. But when you're starting out, you want to target more of the stock fish. The stock fish are going to be a lot easier to catch. They're not very familiar with the food at the moment and therefore they're just going to be curious. They're going to pick up on a lot of patterns. So there's a lot of patterns out there that you can start with. But what you want to start mainly with is the patterns that you're most confident in. And this could be a pattern that you've seen on YouTube, in a magazine, mate of yours you. has been using or something that you've previously used. But when choosing a pattern, why not think of it like this? The backdrop we have when looking at that pattern is dark. The fish's backdrop is the sky. Oh, yeah. And then all you've got to be more concerned with is finding depth they're at and what speed that they're preferring. Now for a really tricky one. And it's often asked, how long do you keep the pattern on before switching it? Now for everybody, this is going to vary. And it may vary depending on the method that you're fishing. For myself, I've got to fish it through every sort of retrieve. If I decide I'm picking a pattern and I'm going to fish it at a certain pace and that isn't working before giving it up, I'll switch the retrieve and I'll try different depths. So I could be fishing a pattern, say like the buzzer, where we all know that we'll fish it static and at varied depths. But I'll also fish it with a steady figure of eight and then I'll even strip it. Once I've done all of that and that pattern ain't working, then I'll consider changing it. But most important, you've got to change it as soon as you lose confidence in that pattern. But as soon as you start doubting any method, any pattern or any location, you've got to switch. Nice and lean. Hook's already out. <clears throat> okay, over the past month or so, I've met so many people who are new to fly fishing. And a good few of them are on our local water. So what I'm going to be doing is working with these people. They're going to be helping me to help you. The thing is, when you've fished as long as I have, you tend to forget some of the simpler things. But I hope you enjoyed this as video said, and that there's a bit of information there that is useful to you. But if you have enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. A comment would be good. So until the next video, take care. There you are. Oh, and he's off. Oh, bugger.